making experiments to set up and to compare several uh, different setup for your system. For example, how many special equipment you need, how many worker you need, and so on and so forth. And also how many pallet and forklift will be, or, or, or worker. So we're gonna do a workers today, real quick. And then repeat the, the experiment part, because last time, and especially in the back, uh, in the end of this, uh, uh, lecture we went a little bit fast okay so we, we repeat that again but we teach you some new stuff uh, as well so if I need workers this is the example on what, what is it let me check lecture six uh, seven lecture seven um, okay so chapter four uh, chapter 5.4 and 5.5. I'm downloading 5.5. I'm showing you how to set up. Can you let me talk? So, <clears throat> this part there is problem number four, remember, in your homework. I require you to do what? Do a relational table, correct? How to do that? Uh, you used to have, in the first part of the homework, you have four sequ uh, two s four sequence table, and have one part table, remember? And your home how, how many done that already? The sequence was a four sequence, typically. If you still not done that part yet, you, you're never gonna finish. Counted 120 hours, how many hours are already devoted into it? So that's the rest of the hours you have to work on. So see if one more week will work for you. I don't think so, but <laughs> so please work on it quick. And we got plenty to come and we also uh, right now, I think, I think, is available, isn't it? The uh, pallet logic. Sequence table, pallet logic. Yeah, this one is available. Equals to current and your Okay, so this part is available for a pallet loading logic, and also you have, I have a pallet unloading logic, part two. Okay, it's coming up tonight, and over the weekend. Depends on how I, when I have enough whiskey to record everything. <laughs> Otherwise I get bored, okay? I spent yesterday morning from three to five, actually do the unloading logic. I spent about two hours on that. So I spent about an hour or so every day, kind of work a little bit. So I have so many uh, videos. So I do it first, then I do it again with a video, so I make sure we pre I present what I, I, at least I show, I know how, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Uh, many times I just wander around. I never implement this in Simil before, I implement in other language, and this is the first time I implement this palette unloading logics in, in uh, Simil, and it took me about an hour and a half to figure it out and test it, refine it, and think about how many hours you need if I spend an hour and a half. <clears throat> okay, so plan your time wisely, work with your partner, and today we're gonna start with this uh, 
actually part five of this thing, okay, using worker resource. One more time. Still remember, set up a part table first was ID 0123 or 1234, and then you have number of arrival, then you have what? Uh, par sequence table, okay? And integrate everything in one giant table instead of four ta uh, sequence table, okay? If you don't remember what happened, and this section goes to chapter 5.5 .5 on your textbook and review how everything need to be set up. And mostly just copy and paste. I tried it myself and spent about less than 20 minutes to make it work, okay? And of course, deleting the full sequence table I originally have caused some errors. I have to clean it up a little bit. Understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, but I already pointed to you to the specific uh, chapter and section to walk through those examples, okay? Question for me at the, this point. You know exactly where to, at least you can write down the se section number, correct? The chapter section number. And you, you already have a model here as working, 5.5. <coughs> All right, I'm going to use this model as example for now, for this homework. I'm going to use resource, okay? Uh, the resource may be a worker, right? I'm going to use this worker as example, and we're going to call it a worker. In 3D, we will see that coming up. Everybody okay with me? So you know how to do this, okay? Let's just have fun for yourself. This part is too easy, so I kind of make it a little bit interesting for myself, especially three o'clock in the morning, have two whiskey, turkey on ice, and then this becomes more enjoyable. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you need you need to learn how to, you know, work hard, but also learn how to have fun. Great. Right? Your version could be coffee, not necessary whiskey. Okay. So my recommendation is coffee. <laughs> so don't tell Dr. Kramer I t teach you how to drink. I'm not. <laughs> Okay, okay, so we're assuming some of the workstation require a uh, machine as, uh, as well uh, for uh, also the, the worker. And some of the workstation, for example, I'm gonna use this one, and they don't need machine, but uh, they just need the labor, how to do that. And some of the uh, server actually need one worker per job, and some of the uh, workstation needs two worker for performing each job. Everybody understand the differences? So now I'm just going to set for one. If this is the one, I'm going to have both machine and worker to work, okay? Uh, let's set this one up. For no, mach uh, no machine needed uh, but the worker, but I need one worker, okay? per job. So here what I, what I do is I set up a resource called worker. Also I can go to the what? Secondary resource. Everybody see this? We learned this before, correct? Just review what we did. Go to the secondary resources and choose what kind of uh, resource I need to perform a job. Is that easy? Not too difficult. Question for me at this point. So that's straightforward, the first version. 
And the second version is I'm going to have this workstation has capacity of two, but each job I need also two worker for performing each job assignment. If I go to the secondary resource right here, if I choose worker again, it will only assign one worker at a time. What if I needed to assign two worker at a time for per job, so I need to do the seize and release instead of a straightforward do it right here. So other resources seize before the processing, I'm going to what, seize the worker. We've done this before, correct? And how many of those? Two unit per object. Two unit per job. Everybody see this? <clears throat> unit per object. So before I process the job, I need to seize two work. Make sense? Make sense? Also, after I done with the job, after I done with the job, I need to release worker. How many of those? Two of those. Am I okay? Yes, yes. If you only need one worker bef uh, before and after, then you just put it into the secondary resource. That's one unit. In case you need more than one unit, this is, remember the restaurant example, we need what? Each table, I can accommodate two customer, and based on the party size, I need to determining how many table I need to seize. Okay, so this is the place to do that. So the second scenario, I have two machine capacity. Okay, uh, maximum I can perform two job, but each job I need two worker to perform the job. Okay, so the maximum I need two machine, four worker, two jobs simultaneously go on and that particular server. Make sense? The next one, <clears throat> this one I'm gonna try to see, I'm gonna reset this. This one, I don't need any machine capacity. I don't need any machine, but I do need worker. And two of them per job. How do I do? So since I don't need any equipment, so capacity should be infinity, correct? No need for any mach local machine, but <clears throat> I'm going to seize the worker, two of the worker, before processing, I'm going to release two of them after processing. That makes sense? So if I only need the labor, which is the worker, to perform jobs, I'm gonna set the server capacity to infinity. Only limitation you have is total number of worker available to this. Make sense? After you've done so, I'm going to click on this. How many capacity I have in your homework? I have 14, isn't it? Something like that. 14 worker, and then I can go to status lab label right here saying what? Capacity UT 
particulars, meaning how many workers are busy in that case. Question for me. <clears throat> Is that okay for now? And I can see how many workers are actually busy in that case. When I finish running, go to the result page, and you can go down there to the bottom. For the worker resource, actually, utilization is about 36%. Everybody okay? Number utilized, what is it? On the average is what? Tell me. Okay, 5.6. Everybody okay with me so far? It's not too difficult, right? So for example, I want to figure out how many worker I need for this process. I'm going to stage to using experiments. Everybody okay? So if in case we're trying to figure out optimal number of worker, what do I do? What do we do last time? Still remember vaguely? Variable? What type of variable was set up last time? Property variable, correct? So we're going to click on property, create a standard property, maybe integer call worker capacity. How's that? Note how to do this, correct? And by default, the worker's capacity is 14 or 16 as is stated in the homework assignment, correct? Mm -hmm. Parameter variable so, called property. Yeah, so keep the workers constant throughout the entire production. I guess just to make it easier, even if it were to be optimal, but have more or less throughout the course of manufacturing, it would just. Be we'll easier. talk about those later on because uh, the worker number of worker can be scheduled, mm -hmm. meaning, uh, for example, in the restaurant in the morning, you don't need anybody come in. That many people come in. You have like two people come in to start up prepare everything, correct? Then during 11 to 1 o'clock, you want full staff. Understand what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. And after uh, 1 o'clock, you go back to half staff again until the dinner time comes. Mm -hmm. So we teach you how to do the variable, so-called scheduled uh, capacity later on. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? <clears throat> It, uh, originally, it is set up as a schedule, but here we're using the worker as what? A constant throughout the simulation for now, and I want to try how many worker I need. That's my objective for now, all right? So I go back to the model, check on the worker, the capacity say,
or cur capacity. How's that? <laughs> Everybody okay? Everybody okay? So, <clears throat> I'm going to let this guy go a little bit faster than it's supposed to be. Probably five. A double the speed of the uh, uh, arrival. Arrival. And create more arrival on the fly so I can see the congestion going on. So I have, uh, let me do two of these, two of these. So arrival batches also double as well. Kind of, it's, this is also one of the requirements in the last part of your homework assignment. You need to kind of determine what is the product mix, right? How many model ATV or model BTV you need to do uh, in order to f optimal the profit. All right. Question for me so far. And next things, I want to determine how many parts got stuck in the system throughout the simulation. Everybody see what I'm doing? So. I want to have something to show, for example, I do a label, and this label call model entity population number in system. Everybody okay with me? I want to see how many entities in the system. If I run this, oh, I have a row going on. What happened? Do I have? Parts population number in the system. Okay. Let's see if this one. Yeah, yeah. You kind of see how many parts now got stuck in the system. I can have a real time report of that, right? And this is what we call it in your homework, referring as what? Work in progress. Am I right? How many parts in the system? Called work in progress. But these things, I cannot perform statistic on that. I do have something like that in, in the result. Let me run this to the end. You see that uh, in the data section, result call. Uh, number in the system. On the average of 2,000, uh, sorry, uh, 238, maximum 429 of them in the system. Am I okay for you? In your homework assignment, we have two different part types. So you will have to count those two separately. Model A, dot population, dot what number in the system. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? 
<clears throat> I can also, also sometimes define a state variable called WIP for model A, for example. Or you have one for model B. Okay. Then we do another one for WIP model B, for example. And in the facility, at the source, what do you do? You do a state assignment before exiting. You do what? Model entity. What we call it? Uh, oh, WIP. Sorry, should be WIP A equals to. WIP A plus what is model A, for example, correct? So here we just add into one. Everybody okay with me so far? Just increasing. I only have one entity type, so I'm just using WIP A for that. Not too difficult. I'm going to create another animation as well, right beneath it. Change the color a little bit so you see the difference. And this is what we call it W A P A. So when whenever there's a new parse generated by the source, I increment this. WIP by one, but also whenever I have a parts leaving the system, what do I do? I decrease them by one, correct? Uh, using stay assignment, can you using an add-on process to do the same thing? Now you should be able to do that by yourself. All right. You see these two number go goes exactly the same, correct? Make sense so far? Everybody okay? Yeah. What do the caution signs mean on the. Oh, I messed up with the symbol, I think. Did I do something? No. What do I do? We're going to have a process. Oh, oh, oh. No more problem on the picture is which symbol I was using. Not too difficult, correct? So far, not too difficult. Going really slow. I set up a, a variable called WIP, okay? Whenever they coming in from the source, I incre increase the uh, variable by one, current value by one. Whenever they're leaving, we decrease by one. The balance will be what? Work in progress in the system. Yeah. So why are we 
I come to that in a few seconds. How's that? Everybody okay? Of course, this is a part of the homework assignment. I, I, I sh just show you how to do that by manually, where to get that from the system uh, f uh, features or, or, or variables. So both of way you can do that. <coughs> So you ask me why I do it a tedious way and a long way and trying to get this done. One of the homework assignment asks actually to ask you, what is the average work in progress inventory you have in the system throughout the simulation? And you need to compare this for multiple scenarios. So now I'm going to start doing this. The system parameter, a system control I have is the capacity for the worker. Uh, by default is 14. I would like to try 10 or 18. See how that happens. Everybody okay with me? And that's my plan anyway so far. I'm gonna, what do I do? I go on to the project home, what? Click on experiment, or I can right click on the model, say new experiment. How's that? All right. <clears throat> so by default, I have a control called workers cap uh, capacity. Um, now I'm going to create a second scenario. I just type S, automatically showed up. I'm going to try 10. I'm going to have Third scenario, I'm going to try 18. How's that? Make sense? Make sense? But I want to try throughout the simulation period what is my average inventory for the setting I have. Apparently, the more worker, I mean intuitively, the more worker I have, what? the job get done faster, since I only have literally one or two workstation need, uh, needed uh, <coughs> uh, machine. Rest of them just need uh, labor. So in that case, maybe intuitively I, I have more worker, I may work, uh, get a better uh, performance. So what I'm trying to do is adding a response call Average work in progress. That's my thing. Everybody okay? Average work in progress. So each simulation runs. I want to see throughout the simulation what is the average. What was the average we just run a few minutes ago? It was about 238, correct? 238. We'll see with the different worker capacity, see if there's any difference. I can do actually here call entity parts dot population dot number and system dot average. Or I can choose maximum or minima. I can do both. Okay? So in your Homework assignment that maybe ask you to do the maximum or the average. Everybody okay? Now I can start running the simulation. You see what is the difference? So with uh, 14, I have the lowest one. 10, I will have a higher. 18, I also have higher. Actually, more worker didn't help, right? See, this is counterintuitive. Actually, they're all the same. 
they're not statistically different. They cover, even though this just happened to that 10 run, this is a little bit slower, but look at the 95% confidence interval. They are overlapping. They don't have significantly different. Does that make sense at all? That makes sense at all? Yes, no, don't care. Kind of understand what I'm trying to say? So you can see that actually <clears throat> the worker more or less didn't have a drastically impact, is not a dominant factor in your simulation model because your capacity or the bottleneck was dominated by number of, of equipment you have. Remember your homework assignment, you need to also study what? The capacity of a certain machine, correct? Special station machine. So how do I do that? Again, come back to my model. This workstation I'm setting up. I'm repeating what, what I'm doing so you kind of understand what's going on. So here I'm going to get another call station one capacity. Okay, station one capacity. Everybody okay? Everybody okay? Station one capacity is similar to that. Initially, I want to set it to one. That's by default. Everybody okay? Then go back to the facility portion. I'm going to set this guy, the property portion, to be what? Station one capacity. So now my model has how many control? I have two control. One is what? Worker's capacity, correct? One is what? <clears throat> so, says I can try various combination I'm just to illustrate you can try various combination for that everybody follow this so far so I'm adding more and more decision vectors uh, decision variables into this and I have one objective function called work in progress can I create another objective function called total profit you know how to do that. We show you last time, correct? Everybody okay with me so far? <clears throat> what happened? Still not really significant, great. Right? So these at least give you some of the flavor how we can set up experiment differently. Of course, these are the objective only you comparison. You can also go into the pivot grid portion to See all the different scenario for all the output statistic in a tableau. You can export this into Excel, Microsoft Access, and do further analyze. Everybody okay with me so far? So this is a very easy portion for that. 
question for me. So you shouldn't have any problem with this anymore, okay? And next one, uh, next time we show you how to automatically set up the scenario in the design portion using the add-on. Okay, using the add-on, uh, the add-ins uh, optimizer. But at least right now we have certain foundation to start with. Before we let you go, uh, let's go take this back to the model. What if right now I want to send the part using forklift? Gonna do it one more time for you, okay? Last night I got some email, some student trying to implement forklift. Never worked. Only required 30 second fix. So I'm going to do this again for you to know what's going on. <clears throat> Remember what we do for the this part, we want to set up a, a, a vehicle to transport, and we call it forklift. And for every single output of the workstation, okay, I Kind of request a, a uh, vehicle call. Okay. Know how to do this one? Okay. The forklift is on. Yeah, we're only. And the forklift homework station is assuming is in the output of that source. Okay. If when it's idle, I'm going to go to home in that regard. Okay. Set up some behavior or setting for my forklift. And also, I can specify the desired speed. Okay, it should be eight miles per hour, roughly like that. And riding capacity, I will set a three. Everybody, okay? Or two, or ten, whatever you want. Yes. Is that how many one forklifter can carry? Can carry. Yeah. You have? Yeah. How many? Uh, forklift can carry. So, <clears throat> how do you set it to like tell how many forklifts you have? Down here, population, how many forklifts you have. So, carrying capacity and population are two different things. Understand what I'm trying to say? Carrying capacity, capacity equals to one clip. Do I ask you to carry that by four clip pallet? Yeah. Is that right? That's that's it by yeah, it just says go by pallet, right? I didn't say go on four clip. It's between the special and installation and the two okay. assembly stations. So right? the four clip does take stuff from assembly one to assembly two? Yes, so yes, yes. <laughs> But then it doesn't do anything past that. Uh -huh. Does it take it to the back of assembly? I think it takes up to the, I don't even think so. Uh, I, I don't even think so. But it, it takes to the, have to take it to the post inspection. It does take it to the post inspection? Otherwise, it, the logic will be very complicated. Um, what about like, the stuff that gets rejected at the incoming inspection? Don't need to. Don't need to. Ha, ha, ha. 
All right, all right. Let's run this, see if it works. Of course, it won't work. <laughs> what happened? I have no idea. Go into the input of a workstation A. Uh, so the parts go into workstation A. What happened? Oh, simulation. Probably need to convert these into that. Let me see if it works. What happened? There is a problem, right? Houston, we got a problem. How many see this since Tuesday? Yeah. Some of you have already seen those from the last lecture period. We need to make it what? Uh, routable pass over. Since the forklift cannot passing through the station, is, uh, the server itself, we need to have a bypass to go around it. All right. Oops. Basic note two. What is that? Transfer. Uh, basic note two. Wait a second, what's going on? I yeah. I think you need a loop at the beginning and the end, kind of the source and the oh, signal. Oh, I see. From here back to here, right? Is that what it is? Yep. Or. They learned from their mistake, correct? 
And you guys already know the answer. I'm just presenting the problem. Question. Would it have also worked to do um, a path from the input node at the sink to the output node at the source? Or do you have to do the little two directional path that we did? You have to, because when they deliver to the sink, they have to come back, right? Yeah, but can it loop back to the sink? You can, you can, can. As long as you have making a loop, you, you so how do you tell the forklift not to carry stuff to the repairing station? I don't think I need these to be. <coughs> All right, question. Say that again? How do you get the forklift to not take stuff to the repair station? Repair station. I have no idea. <laughs> Just don't use forklift. How many points for that. Will we lose if we don't do the forklift? What? And how many points will we lose on the homework if we don't use the forklift? I didn't say you go to the repair station, you need a forklift, right? You don't, but how do you tell it not to go there? You don't go there. <laughs> you just tell them not to go there. <laughs> the output is by, like, you have to call the forklift to bring it. Yeah. Don't you have two up transfer note after the incoming inspection? Maybe. Which one do you tell it to get a Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I think this is it, okay? I don't remember which one was it. Number six, is that right? Or number five? Number six. This one I have a forklift? No, I don't have a forklift. This one. All right, how about this? Okay, this one I have a forklift. Correct? Correct? This one, do you ask for a forklift? Can you ask for a forklift on this one? Am I right? What? Just flowing through. You, are they following sequence, right? But the, it doesn't have a transportation. It doesn't have a forklift. These one does. But isn't the forklift supposed to take Wait a second. Did I say it has to be taken by forklift from incoming to? Yeah. Is that right? Take a look. I don't remember. The last sentence of the first paragraph. Here it says. Two men part of the TV then transport to the assembly station by forklift truck. 
It also says it at the last the last sentence of the first paragraph that the TV screens and cases are carried separately by electronic <coughs> corresponding stations. First, this one? Yeah, the one at the very top. Yeah. So they come from unpacking to installation and special by forklift. Carry separately by their corresponding station. Yeah. In case after after the unpack, unpack and uh, preliminary inspection. Oh, okay, yeah. Simply just add this. Oops, not that one. This one. Go by forklift. Is that right? What is the difficult of that? Yeah, it's plenty difficult. You have to figure it out. Wait, so is the... That's your incoming, model, Corey. You know the, what it is. <laughs> is the incoming inspection a separate station from unpacking? Because in the hints videos, they're separated. But on the problem description, there's not like distances given between them. So Katie, it's a simulation. You could pretend they are the same, correct? There's no distance between them. Okay. Am I right? Sure. So then this is a simulation. Okay. It's just two stations doing one, two things in one station, correct? See, I, I even had a color code, right? Didn't I? Yeah, I should have it. So all these pictures are already shown right here. So you already know what's going on, okay? So the forklift is starts at the like blue, the beginning of the blue section. You see that? There, Sam workstation. So the forklift doesn't take it from unpack to the coming inspection. It only takes it from that transfer node. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. Had enough for a day. Ready to be gone. Not yet.